Hi, this is gonna, gonna be more of a technical video. So uh, this is designed to explain to the nurses how to take care of the patients after high volume liposuction, after surgery for lipedema. Um, in order to understand what to do, you need to understand what's going on. And then the post-operative nursing care should be based about that, uh, around that. So here we go. Um, when we do liposuction for lipedema, we put large amounts of volume uh, of fluid in. So it's normal saline with epinephrine and lidocaine and bicarbonate injected into usually the lower extremities and sometimes upper extremities. The amount that we use is between, I would say five and 10 liters of fluid going in. That's the whole point of high volume liposuction. Uh, anything under five liters is considered to be outpatient or more of a low volume liposuction. And above that is a high volume. And as you know, in most patients, I remove between eight and 10 and maybe a little bit more liters. So it's more complicated. Anyway, so what we do is we put all the fluid in and a saline is designed to loosen up the fat cells and make them easier to extract. Lidocaine designed to decrease the need for narcotic medications and help with the pain control. Bicarbonate is helping to make the lidocaine work faster and the epinephrine shrinks the blood vessels to decrease the amount of bleeding associated with surgery. So after the surgery, you will see the patients wrapped up in a special compressive garment. It's gonna be either black colored or it's gonna be tan colored. It'll have several slits or openings and the openings are made over the incision points where the liposuction uh, access points were. The liposuction access points are gonna be approximately a quarter of an inch or a little bit more or less, that's where the liposuction cannula goes in, all right? So now those gauzes, usually ABD pads, are placed through the openings in a garment and uh, underneath it on top of the wound. On top of the garment, we have a six inch ACE wrap, um, wrapped usually from the midfoot all the way up to the groin, okay? So it's a double layer of compression. The degree of compression is obviously, um, has to be manually adjusted as the swelling goes up and down, but usually you just kind of lift up the garment and see how tight it is. It should be reasonably snug, and but not too tight. And it's important to ask the patient on um, how comfortable they are because they can be the guiding um, uh, uh, portion in that sense. Um, the grade one or two compression parameters are kind of irre irrelevant in a sense. Uh, because the um, swelling goes up and down. So what can you expect? Usually because we put a lot of fluid in and then we took uh, fat and some of the fluid out, uh, residual amount of uh, infiltration fluid is still gonna be there and it's gonna be evacuated in one of two ways. One is gonna leak out through the outside, uh, through the residual openings. And that's what's get absorbed by um, the absorbent pads. And then the rest is gonna go through the body system and excrete it through the kidneys. So if we close the incisions really tightly, then all the fluid gonna massively go to the kidneys and can potentially overwhelm them. And that's one of the reasons why in high volume liposuction, we do not close the incisions completely. It is to allow more of a passive way of evacuating the fluid, right? So the oozing is normal. It can be so significant. If it's bloody stained, it's okay. As long as there's not a bumper there, uh, you really shouldn't worry. You just change the dressings. And the way you do it, you separate the ACE wraps, get to the point where the, uh, there's an opening in a garment, lift it up, pull the uh, wet uh, ABD pad, and then put a dry one on. Usually the drainage stops between 24 and 36, occasionally 48 hours after the surgery. It is very important to remove the uh, ABD pads in a timely fashion because if you don't, they harden up and they become almost like um, plastic plates. So they create the permanent indentation of this on the skin. It's very difficult to get rid of. Patients get increasingly frustrated with that. I put a lot of work on trying to make sure that the contour is nice and smooth. And then if the nurse doesn't take care of the uh, post-operative care properly, then all these pads create these indentations that require manual massage, uh, a lot of work, a lot of pain. So it's important to follow the instructions. So now, within the first 24 hours, you're gonna have the drainage coming from all the openings. Just keep changing them. It's, it's all okay. All right, the garment should be nice and snug and an ACE wrap should be on top. 
If the foot is a little bit more swollen, a patient complains of significant swelling of the foot or pain on the foot, most likely the garment is uh, or compression is too much. So you can loosen up the ACE wrap first. And if it's not enough, then we have to adjust the garment, either change the garment or partially cut the garment, okay? Now, getting the patient up. It's very important to get the patient up in a sitting position. Uh, and the first step is not to put them in a chair, but actually put them in a sitting position in bed. The patients with lipedema, and especially if they have components of uh, connective tissue disorder, known as inland donus donus syndrome, they have um, what's called a, an abnormal response to anesthesia within the first 24 hours. And that presents itself as orthostatic hypertension. But the difference between regular orthostatic hypertension and the one that they develop is that in a regular orthostatic hypertension, as the blood pressure drops, the heart rate goes up to compensate for the blood flow need. But in these patients, the blood pressure drops and the heart rate doesn't go up. So as a result, the patient have a tendency of passing out and it doesn't happen right away. It can happen within the first five to 10 minutes. So one of the important things is once you sit the patient up, don't just leave the room, stay with them for five, five minutes, make sure they're okay. So that's the first step, sitting in the bed. If the patient is comfortable sitting in the bed, you can transfer them in a chair, but the same rule applies. For the first day or two, you sit them up and make sure they're okay. Remember, all the fluid will migrate down with the gravity along with the swelling and that contributes to orthostatic hypertension, all right? Now, before the patient goes home, we need to provide him with a pack of goodies, so to speak, ABD pads, uh, additional, at least one box, and then uh, a set of four or six, uh, maybe eight, um, six inch ACE wraps to apply on top. And some of the patients actually need to be taught how to do it. So you wanna make sure you teach them that the Velcro goes not face down, but actually face up, so it doesn't rub against the skin. You don't start uh, wrapping the legs at the level of the ankle. You start wrapping at the level of the midfoot. Otherwise, this really gets easily swollen, okay? The leg should be slightly elevated. The head should be slightly elevated. Uh, we also pro uh, put the patients on, usually on several medications. We put the patients on pain medications that are non-narcotic, which is Meloxicam or Celebrex. We put them on Xarelto on an outpatient basis or Lovinox inpatient uh, for a prevention of the blood clots. We put them on gabapentin for reduction of the pain and reduction of the need for narcotics. Scopolamine patch to reduce nausea. Zofran to reduce uh, nausea. Maybe sometime low dose of Valium to compensate for possible muscle spasms that commonly happen after high volume liposuction on the lower extremities. And finally, narcotics. And we really try to structure our regimen in such a way that the patient has more of a limited use of narcotics in an early post-operative period, okay? Patient needs, we need to make sure that the patient has a slit in the genital area um, to allow for bowel movements in the urination and uh, the volume of fluid should be monitored. That's why uh, we ask to check uh, the nurses check in and outs uh, on the patients after the surgery, gives us an idea of where they are and if the kidneys are getting overloaded. We do not uh, routinely need to check CBC because they're deceiving with all the fluid shifts and we monitor the patient's overall vital, vital signs uh, and overall appearance to make sure that they're stable in a sense. Um, now, um, that's that's that. Um, now, before the patients leave, if they stay for a day or two and the drainage has stopped, all those pads need to be removed, but the garment needs to stay on because if the patient tries to stay, take the garment off in the first, I would say, five days, um, they can be subjected to what's called a shear injury. And here's what it is. You have a skin on the top, you have a muscle on the bottom, and then we remove that large amount of lipidema fat in the middle. So now we have this loose tissue, and we're trying to bring the, t the skin down, okay, because of this part has been emptied out. Now, as it's down, what's doing, what's bringing it down? It's usually a compression garment. The compression garment needs to be nice and snug, but not too tight. Ace wraps could not rope because they cause indentation, so that needs to be monitored. But what also happens is, is as the top layer comes closer to the bottom layer, the body starts forming tiny little blood vessels attempting to heal those together. Those blood vessels are growing very fast, 
but they're very brittle within the first week. So what's gonna happen is that if you try to pull down the garment and the layers of skin will start moving because remember, they're loose against the underlying muscle. All those tiny little blood vessels can tear and now you have a layer of blood in between that significantly delays the healing. And especially it's important because the patients are usually at that point on anticoagulation for the first week to prevent blood clots. So the bleeding is gonna be more pronounced, bruising is gonna be more pronounced, uh, swelling is gonna be more pronounced, recovery is gonna be to take longer, and the amount of pain and discomfort is gonna be more. So it's very important to make sure the patient doesn't take the garment after uh, the surgery off until we tell them so, which is about seven days. And I know it's gross. And the question is, how do you shower? Well, you take the baby wipes and kind of wipe the areas and clean them to the best of your ability. If the garment got wet, all right, and I know people feel kind of grossed out about that. So uh, you get the hair dryer, uh, put the hair dryer on warm, don't put it on fry. Okay, so you get it on warm and you dry the garment up. Uh, the, I have seen the patients who try to do it faster and what they did, they put it on hot and because they have ultra sensation of the skin, they ended up burning themselves. So not a good idea. All right, so that's kind of the basics of what we expect. Um, and uh, usually when a patient goes to the bathroom for the first time, uh, somebody needs to be with them. Um, also, um, almost forgot, um, when we put the surgical garment uh, in the um, operating room, universally it's very difficult to get it all the way up to the crotch because as we move it, it's, it's difficult to do it. Uh, because the tissues have this kind of mobility and they kind of slide all over. So once the patient stands up for the first time and they're stable, it's important to adjust the garment. So the slit in the groin actually ends up where it's supposed to be rather than somewhere like halfway between the knees, which is really not very useful. So that's what needs to happen. And then all the ACE wraps need to be readjusted. I understand that this is a little bit different uh, from traditional liposuction. When you remove smaller volumes, you put those uh, foam sheets to make sure the contour is okay. We're dealing with a completely different set of patients for a completely different reason. And uh, that surgery has a completely different parameters of risks and complications. So it's very important to follow the rules. So this is again designed mostly for the nurses on the floor uh, to manage the patients after high volume liposuction for lipedema. If you have questions, just give us guys a call and uh, we'll help you with whatever we can.